um, chairperson because the people that are really in need, some of them been turned away by this ward council. And we cannot have a situation if food vouchers being distributed that it, be, it can become a political uh, play ball because people are in dire need of these, uh, 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 you know, of this food. And then in terms of the booking system, um, why must people have, uh, like uh, in the presentation, they were saying they are looking at the system where they go out and make, get the details of the people to make appointments for them. My question then is why must people that don't have money must now still go and find money to get to the, uh, uh, for taxi fare or whatever, to get to the SASA offices just for the information to be taken off, to be taken, you know, to be given the information. Why can't there be a, a total system in place that, that they can just contact the people uh, or, br no, sorry, bringing the services to the people where SASA people going to a specific area in a specific area and then people can 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 gather whether it's a community ball or whatever where people can come and gather and bring their information thank you Chair. thank you um thank you chairperson good morning all good morning colleagues and thank you for the presentation um chairperson i'd like to emphasize the call for that slide that clearly um, depicts the number of doctors per provinces in our last meeting we were informed that there were 500 doctors um, and I would, we would definitely need to see the number of doctors um, to be able to see the, that they will see 80 clients a day in order for this committee to get an idea of whether or not um, everybody will be reassessed by March. Furthermore, Chairperson, the slide that has progress to date, it indicates um, clients that have been booked and clients that have been assessed, but there's no column that indicates um, clients who have now confirmed and are receiving the grant. And I would really appreciate it if we could maybe just include that column um, in that slide of now how many clients are successfully receiving the grant. Um, furthermore, I would like to find out um, from SASA, they've spoken about the community halls. I was informed that Delft Community Hall would be um, in use this week. I would like to find out if that is the case, if the Delft Civic Center is being used as this would alleviate a lot of pressure on the Balville office. And I visited the Balville office last week, um, last Friday, the 29th. And I just would like to confirm that what we see in presentations is still not happening on the ground. For example, the office wasn't open at 6 a.m. There were no chairs that were put out. There were still um, snaking queues, hundreds of people um, that spent the night. And then I did see um, two NDA volunteers. I asked for them, I asked where were they, and the staff pointed them out to me. However, these two young women, they weren't there when I got there at seven. Um, they, arrived, they arrived closer to 9 a.m. And what they are, what I, and I've watched them and what they were doing, they took a very long time to actually start um, with social distancing in the queue. And also they were really just concentrating on the first um, uh, few people who just wrapped around the building. But then of course we know we have scores of other people across um, the road that are also standing there for SASA. So I'd like to also just find out, I'm not too sure if that's the NDA that we'll need to give this information, but also what is their training? What are they, what are their times? What are they meant to be doing? And also if they are um, equipped to answer those general SASA queries, because I feel that that would be very helpful um, in the queue. And then once again, I just wanna say that, you know, we encountered an office manager, Mandler and staff who are really just doing the best that they can with the limitations and the capacity constraints that they have. And those loud hailers that we saw in the presentation, it is so important that it actually just gets to the office because a lot of the time I was even repeating some of the, the, the instructions and relaying information because people don't wanna leave their spot in the queue to come closer to listen to information. And then once again, sadly, when my colleague drove past again at 5 p.m. on Friday, some of those people who were there the morning were still in the queue. So I question the whole effectiveness of the booking system once again. And 
furthermore, in that queue, on the 20th of January, this committee were given the information that, you know, um, clients turning 16 this year would not need to be there. But on that Friday, there were still people who were turning 60 who had traveled to the office to, to come and stand in, in the queue. And when they heard that they didn't have to be there, some of them were relieved, they were very angry, but also there's still a lot of now mistrust with SASA in that they didn't actually wanna leave because they say, how can we trust the information is true. So once again, speaking to the internal communication um, as a whole. Then furthermore, I'd like to reiterate the call for um, some information on who this communication um, agency is. Um, and then to move on to the radio stations. So Ms. Dunkley did say that it is a glimpse. I just would like some clarity, um, how much of a glimpse is it? Because we saw 15 community radio stations and we know that they are closer to about 190 communi um, community radio stations. And I also am interested to find out, you know, is the communication um, unit, um, looking at demographics properly because looking at the glimpse of the 15 radio stations that were given um, this morning, there's a radio station in the Western Cape, Sibonele FM, who, if I can quote what's on their website, says they've got a very unique market in the province of the Western Cape where we only we, we're the only community radio station that broadcasts 80% of its program in Isikosa 24 hours a day in the province. Now, we also do know that the Western Cape, it's about 49% of Afrikaans speaking um, um, population there. So I just would like to know how much of a glimpse we are seeing and if it's more of the, the 190 community radio stations being used. And then just, um, Two more points, Chairperson. I'd like to find out if the Minister has received the police report on the water cannon incident, and if so, by when will the committee receive this report? I also express some um, concerns over the six-minute um, six uh, client for the doctors. And then lastly, Chairperson, the temporary disability grant client who will be declined um, to receive a grant in this in this round that household had become reliant on their grant and now that income is no law no longer apart from the appeals process at what point does the department of social development step in that that puts on the table the government's basket of services to offer that client that family who is now no longer receiving the grant does the department say Here's the list of NGOs that we fund who can assist you with food. Here is the list of the CNDCs. This is how you apply to become an EPWP worker. Because now they, they're no longer receiving their grant because they're not um, being reinstated because they didn't meet the requirements. But who is responsible to offer the, a basket of, of government services to that family, to that household? I would think it's social development. And I just would like to find out if within our government, is, is that happening? Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Honourable, who's the coming now? Yes. It's Honourable Masango. <coughs> Thank uh, you, Chairperson. Chairperson, my apologies, Honourable Masango. Chairperson, may I humbly be excused uh, as indicated? Thank you. Thank you, dear Honourable Masango. Pile will stay on. Thank you, Chair, and thank you so much for the uh, presentation from the department and, and from SASA. <clears throat> Most of my questions have been covered by the previous colleagues, but the, the, the question that, the question, one or some of the questions that have just been triggered by the presentation is, first of all, the paper-based uh, assessment that is is being done for the the grants in a the grants and aid uh, grant. I would like to know why that, given the fact that we still are uh, on level three lockdown in South Africa, and also that we are dealing with a COVID-19 virus or strain that is much harsher than the previous one, the, the first wave, why has 
this paper base using the previous medicals being used to ensure that whilst we comply with the law so that we are not outside of the law in terms of making sure that there is an assessment done, but we also are keeping people, persons with disabilities away from being in the queues because as we know, they are um, mostly the ones that are the most at risk and the hardest hit by the fact that the, the grants that they will have been getting are, are not available to them. And secondly, I would like to know what is the uptake on the 500 Rand SRD so far, uh, given that as we have seen from the comprehensive plan, that the bookings are going to be going on uh, until uh, March uh, 2021. And also I would like to find out whilst talking about the bookings, uh, about the issue of bookings uh, 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 as opposed to the actual assessment, just to get a timeline of what, how long does it take from, from the booking to the assessment to a grant being paid just so that we know that the people that are only booked to for the end of, of, of March as, as the plan is, is, is outlining, we have a sense of when those people will actually have money on hand as it were. And also I just want to reiterate the fact that the plans that we receive today are a clear indication that the people that have had no income since the, the beginning of, of, of January will not have any income uh, at least until uh, mid, uh, mid April, uh, depending on when they actually are going, those who will receive the money, when they are going to receive money. And my reiteration is that of having the grant being paid to these people uh, until the, the assessments have been done, have been done successfully. We also, I also appreciate the fact that not all these people have, will, that, that have uh, applied will or are applying as it were, or are being assessed will receive the grants. That is, totally appreciated because this is a temporary uh, disability grant. But one then says, what happens in a case where a person doesn't know whether they will or, or will not receive a grant, but they are in so much need at the moment to receive the grant. And I'm, I'm saying we are still operating under level three lockdown within the, the Disaster Management Act environment and so saying, why are these people, why are these grants not being paid? One of the slides that were presented today talked to a situation where 80% of the people that are on temporary disability grant are the ones that come back to apply and re be reassessed. One then will, would assume that that means that there is, there has been historically, there has been a, a budget for around 80% for this, uh, for this grant type. And I am saying, why then have we not continued to pay these grants uh, accordingly? And uh, the, the issue of doctors has been, has been covered. Uh, uh, and also the six minutes versus 12 minutes has been covered. And um, the people, the, 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 one of the slides also spoke, uh, Chairperson, on the issue of people, numbers of people being taken and them being called. I have received many people who say that their numbers were taken longer. They were, when they were told that they would be called, they would be told that they would be called in two weeks time. And it's way over two weeks time that they have not received the calls. And just to know how then do those people, what do they have to do? Do they have to go back to Sasai again to give the, to, to, to get the, 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 give their numbers? Because obviously the, the, the way or the, the, the plan or the process 
of saying, if we say we're going to call you in, in two weeks' time, let us call in two weeks' time so that a person doesn't panic and go back to SASA, increasing uh, again the numbers of queues in SASA offices. And Chairperson, the, the issue, and I'm including this because it, it talks to the, the management of queues at SASA offices. I had a call from a gentleman from Montclair in, in Durban, in, in, in KZN, saying that they had gotten a message uh, online when they were doing a, um, wanting to check how far their the grant application for SRD is. And they were told that the payment uh, 20, uh, 01 02 2021. And when they, they pitched up at Montclair uh, Sapo, they were turned away because obviously Sasa was, was, Sapo was paying other grants, I, 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 I assume. So the, the information, the communication has to be as accurate as possible to avoid the people that go to these places with monies they don't have only to be turned back because uh, communication was not as, as accurate as, as it needs to be. And Chairperson, I think one of the colleagues mentioned the special needs uh, 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 in, in, queue, in queues. And I just would like to know who are in, included in the special needs uh, queues, uh, because one would want to know if the mothers with babies and small children, if they are part of the of the special needs queue in 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 these in these in these plans. So, if I could just get to know uh, who are included in the special yeah. needs uh, uh, queue, and chairperson, the. Um, the, the other issue that I wanted to ask is the, the, the numbers of temporary disability grants for Western Cape of, as to why they, has anyone looked at why they are so much higher than the other provinces? Because one would, would even go as far as to ask, what is the breakdown, if, if we can have a breakdown of the two grant types, the temporary disability grant uh, versus the, 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 the disability grant. Because the last thing you want is having disability grant uh, uh, recipients or applicants that are full permanent, if, you, if there's anything like that, permanent disability grant sitting in the temporary disability grant. And the reason I'm asking that is because I received an email from a lady who said to me that she has been on temporary disability grant for five years. I would like to know, I know that these assessments are done on a medical and not social uh, level. So this should really be clear as to what does it mean for a person to be on a disability? Why do we okay. have so many disability grants in, 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 in uh, in, in the Western Cape than the other uh, uh, provinces. Uh, Chairperson, uh, you sound like you're stopping me, but you haven't stopped anyone else before me, so I will stop there. Thank you so much. No, no, no. Um, at some stage, when a petty or a masango is not assisting time, the fact that you allow it, it doesn't mean as a chair you will not intervene at some stage. That's what it means taking charge of the meeting. So I'm requesting that members should try not to repeat other things that have been said. Uh, time is important. Proceed, member. Honorable Masamo? Yes, Chair. You can proceed. I'm just expressing my concern now as a chair. No chair. I, I had thought that first two or three members would be longer. I had anticipated maybe because they would have said a lot of things, those who come after them would be shorter. It seems that is not the case. That's why, that's why I'm worried now. Thank Proceed. No, I'm not proceeding, Chair. Thank you. Okay. I hope you have done your, what you are supposed to do. 
On a Mazamo? Oh, Charlotte, my crack, yeah. I was a little bit of fun and love meeting you. Chucho. On a Mazamo. Thank you, Chair. I'm, 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 I'm okay. Thank you very much. No, it's fine. It's okay. The next me honorable member is Honorable uh, Honorable Pilangolo. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, I won't be long. Um, my question goes like this. In the case of people not qualifying for assessment of re of reassessment, is there any appeal process that people can engage in to ensure that they receive an explanation as to why they didn't qualify and what to do to enable to qualify when they reapply? The second one is, will there be sufficient funding to finance this process to the end of the projected date, which is the end of March, 2021. Is there a process in place to follow up on people who have been beneficiaries of the grant, but do not pre present themselves for assessment? Chairperson, I also heard about uh, Mpumalanga uh, province who came up with an issue of putting a side tent outside the hospital. I just wanted to check if it will be possible to be done also in other provinces, because to me, it sounds as if it can also assist. Again, I, I also want to check the issue of loud yelling. This issue of loud yelling, is SASA or social development having enough cars and warm bodies to take care of the loud yelling process? Because to me, it's like now people are operating or they're working from home and they're in skeleton. I don't know whether this one is going to work or we'll hear about it or see it happening in, other, in some other places. The issue of provincial and local jobs. Chair, I just want to check if they do have a, a template. Because in most cases, while attending the job meeting, whether at the level of the local or the district, mostly they report about the, the procurement of food parcels, the distribution, and management of disaster. With this other other issues, they are not reporting on them. So I just want to check if the, there is a template that they are using. Lastly, Chair, it's not from the report, but I just want to check with the Honorable Minister if, uh, there, is, if there is an arrangement or the plan for deep briefing of people, more especially those who were hospitalized, if you can check with people who were, who were hospitalized, they are traumatized, they are depressed. It's like from coming out from the hospital, they just go straight home, but those people are still traumatized. I don't know whether there is a plan uh, to do uh, the briefing to them. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Thank you very much. The last uh, member, Akbar Briad. Thank you, Chairperson, I will see if I can be short. Um, I would like to commend Sasa firstly, um, uh, the CEO and, and Ms. Dunkley and the, the whole team. I think they've, did, they've done tremendous jobs in um, especially countering f fake news. I had a number of requests and I, I really have to commend them on their graphics and on their press releases. But as the other members have said, I would like to see it on the landing page of the website. I would like to, to have that be more efficient. And if I can maybe start there, Chairperson, um, just as a comment, um, 
members have spoken about the website. I would like them would like to see the mobile website be more user friendly in terms of of in terms of Sasa's website. I've tried to use it a few times and it is really just horrific to use. Um, but that's just maybe a comment. Chairperson. In terms of our SASA offices, and I think that is a recurring thing that some of the members have said, but that I've also experienced, specifically taking into account, I've had a number of complaints from Kruenstadt in the Free State and from a number of the Gauteng offices, where the communication and the information that we've been given here has not siphoned through to them specifically. Um, one of my counselors in Kruenstadt specifically went um, to ask and to, to request and to see what they know. And they did not even know that, I think it was Honorable van der Merwe that said, that the referral letters are available on the website. And they said, if you do not come in, get your form there and make the booking, we will not assist you. And um, which I think is not, which is not good practice. Um, also, maybe let's start with, with the Gauteng offices as well. Um, they were not informed, those people, they only have, um, one of the ladies I spoke to only has a appointment on the 26th of March. So I would like to reiterate that. And also I would like to find out about that 500 Rand SRD grant. These, um, these TDG applicants that go to make appointments, they, don't, they are not informed about that. What is the process? Can we be informed about that? And do our officers know about that so that they can sufficiently inform those temporary grant applicants that are no, now without an income for January and February and most likely March as well. Um, Chairperson, then in terms of a lot has been said about the doctors, maybe just in terms of that, when space opens up in terms of earlier appointments, will those people that have appointments at the end of March be contacted? How would that be? How would that work? And I think the question about the, the 80 people has been covered. Chairperson, then with regards to, oh, and then just maybe where are those extra doctors, those 500 and something doctors? Can we get a breakdown of them specifically in those places? And maybe just to add to that, where are those additional facilities? Um, Ms. Dunkley mentioned that some hospitals have brought new facilities. I think Honorable Belankula mentioned it, but can we get a breakdown which community halls are being used, which hospitals have extra sites so that we can also from our sides try and distribute that. Um, chairperson, in terms of the automation, I think that it is good. I think it's a long time overdue. Um, and I would like to ask and request that we on a monthly or quarterly basis get updates as the portfolio committee on where this progress is and to see a sufficient progress report in terms of that. Um, chairperson and then additional and lot has been said about the communication company. What is the amount that we are employing them for? And my complaints are also regarding the manual booking system. I think they have been covered. Chairperson, I hope that was quick enough. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Chair. Who is calling now? It's Anastasia Chair. I raised but my I hand. But I missed your, your hand I on the chat. I did, But I'm going to say something. 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 I'm Honorable members, I deal with the names which are here. Anastasia, I can see it now. But it was okay. not there. Okay. Honorable okay. Mazani, are, you, are, you, are you having your hand up? I think I was number five when you count. And then I no, my network I said, goes off. My chart. No, five. Not go I'm still Is your, are, you go, are you going to speak? Honorable Mangani, do you still want to speak? Yes, Hello? Chair, I've got one question. Yes, Chair, I've got one question. No, no, you will speak after Honorable Daum. Honorable Daum? Kelebu ha Chepesin, Kelebu ha the department, the Sasa ka presentation ya bona e matla. Uh, my first question will be, Chairperson, what contribution do paper-based assessment make in alleviating the pressure in the system? I think uh, Umemba Masango also spoke about it. Have this paper-based assessment 
being introduced in all provinces. And the last one, Chair, which is a department, <coughs> in relation to the matter of SASA and SAPO, may we please receive a high level brief, a le- a high level brief on some of the challenges that are being experienced and how how these are being addressed. Thank you, Chair. Kya khole ukwa ye tse Chair? Oraksa ukwa ha. Chair. Thank you very much. Proceed, Proceed uh, on a good down. Okay. I'm supposed to Are you done? I'm done, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Kilebuhe Sebaka, Nike and Sagore Department and Social uh, and Sasa, they've done their level best by addressing most of the challenges that we were raising during the previous uh, meeting on the 20th. <clears throat> but I want to just do a follow up to ask what lesson have been drawn from this intervention that we have mentioned. And how will this be used to ensure that the 31st of March deadline is met? And then I wanted also to uh, uh, make make sure that what the department have mentioned that uh, maybe uh, we must make time for the committee of sub of uh, communications and sub and. SAPO, because communication and SAPO, I think they will come together and meet and make sure that uh, we address this together. We hear from the from them, from SAPO or communication, because it's difficult sometimes, department going to them, but we don't get this feeling that they will do what the department have asked. Lastly, Chair, on, t- on this issue of communication, I will suggest that we've got a, a house of chiefs in each and every, uh, especially we at the rural. We have the house of uh, uh, chiefs. If uh, the department, some, they can also utilize it by uh, uh, disseminating the messages to the uh, rural area in the communities. Also use the radio station around the 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 the, the uh, difference zone because some of the radio station doesn't filter in this place and then some on this place My, myself i've got bakata radio station only where i stay but i have never had so many messages so i was just suggesting if they can also utilize it thank you chair Thank you. Uh, I think my chat is clear now, honorable members. Uh, maybe before the departments, is the minister still around? Uh, yes, she is. Yes, she the minister is around. Yes, I am around, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say some few things, Honorable Minister and Acting DG, which will actually, at some stage, when you do progress report, responding to a series of questions that have been raised again. I think one first wants to appreciate that there's a demonstrable intervention to put together an action plan. But I'm clear, having listened to questions, even having read, read look at the document, that there's a need to, re, to restructure it, acting DG, maybe amend or 
I'm not sure what's the right word or augment. Uh, I'll tell you why. This plan is more about interventions and completion of those intervention deadlines regarding the completion of interventions. And I can tell you, if it's like that acting DJ is gonna be subjected, unfortunately, to moving goalposts. I'm sure if you favor one of the football clubs, you know what we mean by that. Are you there acting DJ? Yes, Honorable Chairperson. Yes, let me just give you an example. What, what will make the goalpost to continue to shift is that if you say you are intervening in poor queue management, it means there's a problem with regard to poor queue management. Are we together? Yes, Chair. And it means that problem has to be described. Once it's described, a preferred situation should be articulated. Once you say this is the problem of the queue management, these are the manifestations of the problem. It means that if you are resolving it, you must propose what is a preferred situation. I'll give you an example. Let us say, on average, each client takes an hour before being served. Your problem statement could be, people take an hour before they are served. That is a problem. When this thing is resolved, would want people to take 10 minutes before they are served. Now we know your preferred state. Because if that is not done, it's going to be moving, forward. we'll always have problems. But once we agree with you on the preferred state, once that preferred state is achieved, the, we're not going to say there's still a problem because the preferred state has been realized. So when you go to do oversight, you can go anywhere, you can go to Deben and check and follow two or three clients and check how many minutes it does have assembled. We'll know that the preferred state has been realized. Uh, if I go to the other place, for instance, it says uh, criminal queuing and selling spaces. You can be able to say this is a problem statement and somebody can ask, what form does it take? Maybe you can say for every, every venue, we've got a minimum, we've got a, a minimum of about 10 cases of this nature. We want zero this. That is a preferred state, right? I can go on overcrowding and social distancing. You can say, for instance, the reason there's overcrowding, the reason they have got a problem and there's no social distancing, you are describing the problem situation. You can say, because every hour, you can say per given venue, we've got 100 people. I'm just making an example. Because there are 100 and the space so allows, and they are overcrowded, a preferred situation here to keep social distances. It means every given time, we should have less than 40 people in this venue so that we keep, that's a preferred state. And then when you come to us and you go to do an oversight, we want to check if indeed from 100 to 40, therefore social distancing. In other words, all these interventions, need to have a clear description of the problem, need to have the clear articulation of the preferred state so that when you have achieved them, we cannot come back and keep on saying the matter has not been resolved. Come to the doctors. I, I, I've made a general statement on all innovations. Come to the doctors. If you come to the doctors, if you will correct if I get this thing clear because it says, uh, hold on, just a second. It says uh, we have increased it to eight hour session. 
eight assessment, eighty assessments, six minutes per client. Now it means for eight hours. I want you to explain how is this thing happening. It means it, uh, do these doctors have breaks? What kind of breaks do they have? Because if they have got breaks, it can't be eight hours per day. It should be more than that. Because if they do not have a break here, both the time they take per patient and the continuation for eight hours spells disaster. And I think the honor, that honorable member said that. I just wanted to make this, I'm not sure if I'm making this point acting digit. Yes, yes, honorable chair. Description of the problem and the preferred state so that the goalposts are not moved because if that is not done, you will think we will frustrate you. Will every time you come, you will say you're not doing your work. My proposal today makes sense. One hundred percent, chairperson. Um, Thank you very much. Me. Can you respond to a series of questions then, and then the minister will close. Chairperson. Thank you. Hello. For, for in interjection, um, a member stock uh, uh, forwarded uh, three questions. Can you read them? Can you read them? Okay, Chair. Uh, the Mr. Stock's uh, question are as follows. Uh, based on the data received on the progress to date, there is a variation between the booked and assessed numbers against the target envisaged. What is the reason for this variation? The second question, the Western Cape, KwaZulu Natal and Gauteng have high targeted numbers, seems to be really struggling with booking and assessment. What are the causes of this? Sorry. Um, what are the causes of, of this? How are they being addressed? And what time frames are linked to addressing these challenges? The third and the last question, in what manner do medical assessments impact the variation between the booked and the assessment variation? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Those are the three questions for members talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just to, to, to strengthen this point, acting DJ, for instance, one member was asking, after the assessment, how long does it take a client to be paid? You can be able to say currently, the average, it takes so much, but your preferred state would be that it takes so much. It immediately we work like that. We've got common standard between ourselves that we can assess one another. And then we simplify the communication and relationship. And I can tell like, but I have no doubt there are major interventions that you guys have made. But I think when you come back to give a progress report, it must be of such a nature that we're able to avoid moving goalposts. Uh, can you respond? And then the minister will close. To respond okay. to the other questions. Th thank you very much, Chair. Um, and, and thank you for the guidance as well. I think it's very, very useful. Uh, and I completely agree with the way in which you've packaged it as well. And I think the fundamental thing is for us to ensure that our norms and standards or standard operating procedures are in place uh, to be able to determine the specific preferred state, as you indicate. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Um, uh, exactly. And that's very important because that's the way you check whether you have efficiencies or not. And if you yeah. don't have that, you don't have efficiencies. And then you end up dealing with the, pro with, with not, you're not dealing with the root of the problem, but you're dealing with a situation uh, which actually leads to the roots. And so I completely agree with you. Um, and so it's important that we actually get down to the root causes of, of some of the challenges that we're facing. Thanks, Chair. Um, that's very, very useful. And I think when we come back and present, we'll be able to show that this is what the, the standard operating procedure is for this particular matter or the preferred status uh, of how this, is ought, uh, this ought to operate. And then the actual challenge, why we have the challenge and the, and, and the remedial action to address that. Uh, accordingly. So thanks, Chair. If I may suggest um, um, that um, um, we, we get the CO to come in and just deal with one or two and then Diane and then CO, if we can ask the provinces um, very quickly, um, the colleagues from communications, Temba perhaps, as well as um, and Zotwa, just to deal specifically with some of the questions that, have, that members have asked. And then immediately after that CEO, I'd like to have uh, Chairperson, I'd like to ask the, the CEO of NDA just to respond to the question around training for NDA volunteers. And then I will come in there. Two points I want to raise at, 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 at immediately after the CEO, Chairperson. Thank you very much. By the, 
sorry, just a second, Acting uh, TG. In case I forget this, by the way, my apology. We were looking at the AG's report, where AG criti criticizing criticizes the, the response of the auditees. Social Development Department is one of the departments that are commended for response that directs, that, that indicates that they are moving in a direction that is required. And I want to say this, my comment in that meeting was that is because there's a cordial relationship between the portfolio committee and the department. And the department is not sensitive to criticism. And there's a lot of things we can indicate that shows that there is improvement because of this open relationship, which is robust and constructive. Continue acting, DJ. Thank you very much, Chairperson, for that. We really appreciate that. And really our, our task is to ensure that we maintain the cordiality um, of, 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 of ourselves and, and, the, and the committee in understanding the role that the committee plays and indeed in taking the guidance uh, uh, that the committee has provided. And you'll see when, when we come back and report on the PRRR that majority of the issues that the committee has raised we've actually managed uh, to deal with and address accordingly. Thank you very much, Chairperson, for that. We really appreciate it. Yo. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I, I see you you shifting there, the two of you, uh, CEO and and uh, and uh, Dintin. I didn't see any sanitization before you said there, CEO. I see you sitting at the same seat. Can you please sanitize? Yes, we do have the sanitizer, ma'am. What I will do is whilst I sanitize the chair, I'll just ask Diane to respond to all the other detailed uh, um, um, information whilst we get the slide also in terms of the issues with the doctors. I'll ask Diane to respond to all the, the, the technical issues. And then subsequent to that, I'll ask Baseka to respond to the issues that are related to communications. We have about eight trucks which are already on the ground uh, and, uh, and we will we'll fly to that slide that indicates as to what it, where these uh, trucks are. Thank you, apologies. No. Diane? Thank you, CEO. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson and members. I will try and respond to some of the questions at least. Um, there were a number of questions and concerns raised around the number of assessments that are being done by doctors. I think what I just really want, and, and sorry, also the question around why we don't use the previous medical assessment for the doctors. Um, just to explain the process, the that, that is why the referral form is so important because the referral form gives current yeah. information on the treatment um, of the client. If we were, there, there were some serious concerns raised using the medical form, which is on the SASA file, um, because we know that there are, are challenges with that. Um, and I won't go into a lot of the challenges now, but it will certainly update some of this. So it was felt absolutely necessary to get the most current information of the client. So the client comes to the assessing doctor with a background, with a history that has been detailed on the referral form. Um, and because of this, the doctor is able to very quickly scan through that and then do the assessment. So it's not a full physical assessment which the assessing doctor has to do. It is based on the updated information which has been provided and this is why they're able to do the number of assessments that are done that, that we allow. I also just want to stress that the 80 assessments per day is the maximum that is allowed. Um, and Chairperson, in response to you and, and having taken note of, of your um, suggestion that we give you the preferred state that would, would help with some of these questions, certainly that is taken. A doctor is, a, is, is given an, a session of that session, and it's not just an eight hour block, um, of that session for eight hours, he needs to do a maximum of 80 assessments. It cannot be more than that. Most of the doctors are actually doing less than that. It's very few that are going up to the 80 assessments um, per session. However, they are given time for bathroom breaks, for lunch breaks and things like that. 
So while they we account for the eight hour session that they do the assessments in, that is not the only time that they spend at our local offices. Um, but we would give more information then around the doctors. There was a question on, on, on the social relief support that is being provided up to, um, well, currently, we've already processed 2,880 applications um, and provided 1.4 million rand in, in, in support to people who are awaiting the assessments. Certainly that provision will, be, will continue because we know that people are waiting for assessments and while they're waiting for the assessments, they don't have any income at all. There was a question around what recourse people have if they reapply and the application is turned down. There is a reconsideration and an appeal process. The um, reconsideration form currently is only available at the SASA local offices, but one of our automation targets is to make sure that that reconsideration request is also available on our website. Um, it should be available very shortly because we're just doing the amendments that are necessary for that. It would be, the clients would then would be able to get it on the website, complete the request for reconsideration and just email that back to us. So we could do the reconsideration of the decision that was made not to award the grant. And if that reconsidered decision is still unfavorable, then the client has the right to appeal. And that appeal is de dealt with by the Independent Appeals Tribunal. And they are they have specialists, doctors and lawyers that were not involved in the initial application at all. So they do a, 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 an assessment and then will make a decision purely on the merits of, of each case. One of the changes that is being brought in with the amendments to the Social Assistance Act and when the regulations are published is that the reconsideration by SASA will no longer be required. Um, and the reason this has been done is that the reconsideration is based on information that is available to us and we don't have additional doctors to look at that. So it's really an administrative step which very seldom changes the original decision. So the, uh, the Social Assistance Act has been amended to allow people to appeal immediately if their application is refused and that would certainly would streamline the processes. It's really important that the applicant knows they need to apply for reconsideration and appeal within 90 days of getting the decision. Otherwise, they have it, it, you know, it is too late for them to want to appeal the decision made when the grant lapse. It has to be done when they are given the outcome. Then there was a question around which NGOs um, dealing with persons with disabilities we've started to engage. We've already had engagements with the South African Disability Alliance. We've also had some engagements with Doctors Without Borders. Um, those are two specific ones that I can think of right now. But we have also sent out information to a significant number of national organizations dealing with persons with disabilities, including, for example, the Mental Health Foundation, the um, South Africa Epilepsy, Foundation, the um, organizations dealing with people with cerebral palsy, and, and a whole range of them, uh, the, that list could certainly be made available to the committee. But one of the intentions was really to see how we can strengthen our relationship with these organizations and help them, you know, request them to help us get information out to the affected clients. Um, the some of the other questions um, that, that I will respond to and then I will hand back to the CEO is around the money available for the grants. I want to reassure the committee members that we have sufficient funds to pay for grants that are approved. Um, and, and I really want that message to be loud and clear. Um, we will have money for grants for grants that have been approved. The 32 million that I spoke about in the presentation is the um, the um, available amount for the medical assessments for the lapsed disability grant. So it is the administrative budget available to reimburse doctors that are doing the assessments. Um, and, and certainly we just want to reassure the committee that we have the funds to reimburse the doctors, but we also do have the funds to pay for any grants that are approved. Um, and then, and, and I'm not sure if the CEO wants to speak to the slide, but what we've got here is the number of contracted doctors per province, um, which is 286. 
one of the members had mentioned a number of 500. And I think what I would just like to clarify, and I will hand back to the CEO, is that the number of 500 that we spoke about in the last meeting was the request for an expression of interest that was sent out to more than 500 doctors. Um, these are doctors in the Western Cape. Of that, 33 doctors came back and expressed an interest to work with SASA on this project um, and certainly for assessments going forward. But they, um, the contracting and those processes are still underway. And I'm sure Western Cape would be able to give us an update in terms of how far they are. I also just want to explain that while we have 286 contracted doctors, we also use doctors in the health environment. So in the public sector, and the reason I know some of the questions we've had before is why do we not use doctors in public, in, in private practice? We, the, the Social Assistance Act requires us to have the assessments completed by doctors who are in the, in the employee of the state. Um, and the reason for this is, is there, there are a number of reasons, but the biggest one is to make sure that we can hold those doctors accountable. Um, because disability grants, as the honorable members may be aware, is probably the one grant type where there is a, a significant leeway for fraud. And we've got to be really careful on how we deal with that. So we, where we use doctors who are in private practice, those are the ones that have to be contracted to SASA so that when they do the assessments for the disability grants, they are actually in the employee of the state for that period. And then we do use the doctors um, in, in the state, in the public sector environment, and those numbers we did not put on the schedule, and they do vary by province. Um, and then obviously we had uh, tried to relieve some of the pressure on the doctors in the public sector by implementing the paper-based or the file-based assessment process, which I had spoken to in the presentation. But I will hand back to CEO and then be available if there are any other specific questions that she would like me to respond to. Thank you so much, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, honorable members, I thought it was very important for us to uh, put together, to, to, uh, to flight this slide that actually indicates what has been done uh, in terms of uh, what we have in terms of capacities in each and every province. Uh, on the issue of the trucks, that were actually raised. Uh, we have eight trucks that are the ones that are on the ground in different areas. As we can see, the, the area where we have most trucks is actually in, in Northern Cape, and it has to do with just the vastness of the area in Northern Cape, but in all the other areas, uh, the trucks do exist. We have 28 trucks all in all, but not all of them are being utilized. And we're looking at what are the things that we need to do to use the trucks not only in terms of ensuring that uh, they do the work, but also for us to be able to, to, to wrap the messages depending on what it is that we have uh, as a crisis at a given time, because they do uh, have a lot of impact in terms of just uh, the, 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 the breadth of those trucks and, and the fact that they are known to be SASA trucks, we think that is important. The service points are also there and the issue of the doctors, the contracted doctors is also there. Diane has spoken to it. The number of uh, volunteers that we have, uh, having had the feedback, I think there's more work that we need to do, but I think the, the NDA CEO can, can, can also indicate as to what are the other things that we're doing to make sure that the, the, the look and feel of the, of the, of the volunteers is also clarified and we know what it is. They know what it is that they need to do, but I, I, I do know uh, for a fact that they do actually get, um, they do get trained prior to them being uh, put on the ground. Uh, Chair, what I wanted to do was to ask uh, Baseka to talk about the issue of the communication so that he can highlight. We do have the whole deck on what has been done everywhere, which we can provide to the me members. It's just that it was too big in terms of us highlighting what has been done where uh, for, for us to indicate to the members, but what we could potentially do is to share the deck so that uh, the members can see what has been done where. But Baseka will talk to that. I think it becomes a, a critical uh, a chair to also highlight 
as Basaka will talk to the company that's providing support and on the issue of the call center that uh, that that has is the new call center that we currently have it could have to do with uh, the settling in the regions will talk talk to what exactly is going on what hunting lines are used in their areas so that they can specify as to why for exam example honorable Faner Merve is having challenges in terms of uh, reaching us on those call centers so i think it becomes critical for us to 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 indicate the specifics uh, Baseka, can you come first on the communication one and then we'll get at least one a regional executive to talk to uh, what is happening in their environment and I'll ask Chamber to come through. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, th thanks, Chairperson. Um, uh, good afternoon, Chairperson. Um, uh, honorable members, uh, Minister, Deputy Minister, I think let me just uh, say we will definitely make the document available to all honorable members so that they can then be able to go through it. There's a question which was asked by Honorable Member Van der Merve and uh, Honorable Member Briet about the website. Um, we can safely say we have taken a decision that we are going to do a total overhaul of the website. Um, and I think will definitely be done uh, by the end of February so that we can then address some of the questions which were uh, raised by Honorable Members. The, the issue which was raised by Honorable Member Van der Merve as well in terms of the Twitter and Facebook uh, with regards to information about the trucks uh, and how many people we have appealed and so on. The, uh, uh, said that there's a certain message which we have to, to cut to, to make sure that it fits in terms of the Twitter, uh, but we take the, the, the matter that was raised by Honorable uh, Father Mevet to say certain things we need to add on the Facebook or the Twitter, but what we thought that if the information is uh, has got a more information. We think that it, it, it would have been better for us to put it on the website. Uh, we'll try as well to, to put some of the information on the other side. We'll continuously uh, engage. We also get some of the tips uh, from members of the public when they interact with the website and so on. But I can guarantee members that uh, we'll definitely do the total overhaul. There's an issue about uh, which was raised by Honorable Member Masango with regard to uh, we need to make sure that we communicate so that people do not necessarily come to the office. They need to understand uh, before they come to the office in terms of whether they have to come and so on. We do that, uh, Honorable Masango, we engage basically with the communities through the community using the community media, especially if we have to talk about um, uh, people who come to the office basically on the days of application. And on another matter, we also put posters in the offices, especially those who interact with the offices. They then can be able to know when they can then be able to interact with the office and so on. We understand that sometimes you don't have to travel from uh, where you stay to come to the office. And then when you get there, you are told that you can be helped. There's a question which was raised by Honorable Member uh, Bilankuli as well about loud hailing. Uh, we can safely say on this one, we think loud hailers, they play a very critical role, especially if there is a message which we need to, um, to spread all over the communities. We are able to, and it's also not, when you buy them, they are an investment. Uh, they stay in the office. When you need to interact with the communities, we then can be able to take them, put them on the tracks and actually interact with the communities. We have uh, procured to make sure that uh, they are all over the, the country. When people visit, then we can then be able to access them uh, easily. Um, yeah, no, I think, uh, I think, Chairperson, thank you very much. Uh, those were the questions which uh, were posed uh, with regard to communication. Um, uh, yes. Thank you, thank you very much, CEO, um, and good morning, honourable chairperson and honourable members. Uh, indeed, very uh, valuable input made to, to to the presentation. The the quick one, uh, honourable chair. The we, we acknowledge the challenges faced within the call centre. I must just indicate that we, uh, on average, we receiving almost 140 to 200 calls uh, per day in the call center. 
and and the capacity the level of capacity varies from province to province in, in free state for example we have five uh, call center agents that are main in those calls and and you will imagine that not all the calls will actually go through um what we are trying to explore now uh, we know that we we had created almost 10 hunting lines that if the numbers are not going through the the, the call center the main line it goes through the, call, the the hunting line but we've realized that i think that there's a bit of some technical issues why other numbers are not going there so we are exploring uh, the possibility of at least creating additional lines over what we've already uh, uh, supplied so that we are able to manage the volumes of the calls that are coming in it is mainly because of the volumes that are coming in every day uh, uh, 10 so we'll attend to that as we come back to the committee we should be having a better explanation on how how we are improving the call center uh, ceo and chairperson honorable chairperson let me also um there was an issue to say uh, what kind of stakeholder engagement we having on the ground uh, with regards to dissemination of information uh, i think honorable fanar member mentioned that uh, we, we are meeting through jog uh, with with all the the municipal officials and we are disseminating this information so this is what we, we are doing uh, on the ground and, and we encourage even the local managers to engage constantly with the councillors. So this is information that we can always go back and monitor whether it's happening. But we are aware that in, in Umzunduze, for example, we have been meeting in the job meetings with, with everyone to inform on, on the state of, of readiness. So we will definitely improve where we, we, we think we are, we are not doing that. But through the job, we are meeting Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much. Can you unmute? Yes, the chair. Chamber, you're still muted. I, I think you're done, though, right? Yeah, I just unmuted now, uh, DJ. Okay, thank you. Chairperson, um, I would like to please ask the CEO of SASA very briefly, to, uh, so, sorry, of NDA, to briefly just talk about uh, the issue around the volunteers and the training that, uh, that, that, that is undertaken in that regard. CEO? Um, thank you, DG. Uh, good morning, uh, good day, uh, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, Minister and colleagues. Um, Honorable Chair, on the question by Member Abrams, Honorable Member Abrams, we've been in this process of volunteer assisting uh, both DSD and um, SASA for as far back as six months uh, since the, the pandemic. But the, the, the direct response to the question is the, the sudden influx that was <laughs> to the case of the Western Cape. At that time, that point in time, we had to activate the volunteers that we had because the program had since lapsed in December. So due to the demand and the need due to the influx of the, 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 the TDG, so we had to activate them. Now, in activate them, I think I want to pin it to what the chairperson had highlighted in the nature, in the manner in which we define the problem, we describe the problem, and then we come around with the preferred solution. So it was a sudden influx. We had to come and assist the best we can. Even the time shift for the volunteers to be expected to come at half past six, with the arrangement that we had, they will come at the opening hours under normal circumstances. And they're only to working for five hours because we pay them below the threshold of the EPWP since this was a spatial response to COVID-19. When with regards to the training thereof, the SASA we've been engaging in series of training depending on the nature of the intervention that is needed. With the online registration for 350, there was a spatial training which took about two weeks for these volunteers to be empowered and equipped identifiable and all that. So we've been doing just that. Like I'm saying, with the sudden influx of that unique uh, uh, situation in the Western Cape, we had to jump quickly, but we have since reflected because we have timeless meeting where we reflect with management, which is provincial management uh, from NDA and the district managers from the SASA, including the province. So where, where we are, we are reflecting and we are re-strategizing as per the guidance of the, the, the chairperson in terms of let's redefine the new problem that has emerged. So the training that will be put in place will be aligned to the 
immediate uh, challenge that we have since experienced over and above the ordinary training that we give them. And to add on, even with the Department of Health, they, will, they, will, they were asking us to assist them. They will train them on a special five days where exactly they would want the interventions of this um, youth who, who are unemployed graduate. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Tichi. Thank you very much, CEO. Chair, if I may just uh, quickly just deal with the... Uh, well, firstly, let me indicate that there may be some questions that we were not able to respond to completely. Um, and uh, we, we, will, we will make sure that we, we respond to those in writing um, uh, so that um, uh, we, we are able to have dealt with everything that was asked in the meeting today. Um, so we, we, we can do that. Then I wanted to quickly just respond to the issue raised by Honorable Adris um, around the food vouchers uh, matter uh, being delivered by, by councillors in KZN. While we were in the meeting, we actually checked in with the province on this and they've confirmed that um, there's no information uh, that they have received um, uh, uh, around councillors delivering food parcels. Um, and so um, no councillors distribute food parcels. What they've done is they've appointed uh, a company to assist with food vouchers. Uh, and um, uh, they are, those vouchers are redeemable at all retailers. Um, and so, so, so recipients are able to take that. What I would recommend and suggest perhaps, Chair, is that um, Honourable Adris uh, do, does share this information with us, the details thereof, and then we'll be able to deal with it accordingly. Um, engaging with the province, of course. Uh, then I wanted to quickly uh, come in on the question of the um, of the uh, of the post office and some of the challenges that members have raised. I, I think what we would certainly welcome here, person, with your guidance, is a joint meeting uh, with the um, uh, 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 the that will rather include the post office, so that we are able to address the challenges that are entailed. Within. We do think that um, there are a range of challenges. Um, um, that, that, that unfortunately um, uh, uh, before the, the, the post office, uh, like many institutions, of course, uh, but uh, what we've done in our space in terms of trying to address some of the challenges uh, that at least have an impact on, 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 on the payments of grants uh, is um, the minister established what we call a joint exco, uh, which is a, a gathering rather, not really just a gathering, but a, a forum that includes both ministers um, and the CEOs um, of the agencies, including the DGs, um, and then I've gone further and established a technical team further below that, that meets on a regular basis. And we try and make sure that we address the critical issues that are affecting us uh, in terms of the distribution or the payment rather of, of, of grants. And um, we've seen a number of challenges coming up in, in this regard. Challenges including uh, there not being adequate funding, uh, sorry, money um, um, uh, uh, um, uh, that is able to be or, or, or provided, disper dispersed to, 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 to uh, recipients because of a range of other issues, including robberies that take place on a regular basis. Uh, some technical challenges, uh, when one happens to be fixed, sometimes you, you find that another one uh, pops up and so um, recipients are not able to, to, to get either early notification that there's a problem at the post office uh, and sometimes they go there and stand in a long line and sometimes they're not able to be assisted because of some technical challenges. But we are engaging with them in this regard and finding a solution um, uh, working with them to try and see how best we can move past some of the challenges um, that are there. But in essence, Chair, we would certainly welcome a joint discussion uh, with them uh, um, uh, in, 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 the, in, in, in the way in which the chairperson uh, and the committee feel, um, advises uh, be done um, uh, to really deal with some of the challenges. And then just to also highlight that some of the cues that are experienced, in fact, the cues that are experienced in the main at, 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 at SASA accused that are dealing largely with uh, registrations, inquiries at times, uh, or, or new applications in, in the main. Um, the queues that are at the post office are largely queues um, that are affecting people who are going to collect uh, 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 the 350 grant in, in particular. Uh, we're likely to see those uh, um, uh, phasing out over time because of some of the systems that have been put in place. And in fact, we have been engaging even with the post office to say, this is what we've done um, in terms of trying to address queues. This is what we suggest you guys could consider doing um, at various post offices, including the issue of loud hailing, uh, the issue of having uh, uh, people who are on, who are able to come out and man the queues, for lack of a better word, and so on and so forth. So we can we can speak to some of those issues. Lastly, Chair, let me really just appreciate the the wisdom of the committee and uh, some of the issues that have come out in in this meeting, particularly the areas around um, uh, the preferred state of our systems. I think all of this really, the discussions that we're having in this meeting, including the meeting of the week before last, is really dealing with the effectiveness and efficiencies of our systems. And I think that um, the guidance that is coming from the committee is going to assist us in uh, not only dealing with the root causes, but also addressing uh, some of the challenges that may pop up 
um, uh, 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 on the surface um, and we're able to address those by dealing with the root causes so that we don't have them popping up or when they do pop up, we're able to swiftly address them and ensure that um, we, 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 we really give our customers and our clients uh, the kind of service uh, that they would expect, which is a, a service that is swift, a service that is effective and a service that is reliable. And I just thought that I should say those um, uh, that, that in closing. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I think I can ask the minister to come in now. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Acting DG, Chair are we able to know when the plan on similar issues jointly with SAPO is going to be presented to the committee? Advantage. Yeah, Chair, so, so maybe what we can do, Chair, is have have a conversation and get guidance uh, and then come back to the committee and advise in that regard. No, 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 but the, po the point I'm raising is that they are being paid every month, the same problems do okay. Uh, we, it's important to know when are you guys going to present that plan to us? Okay, Chair, so we have a... a, a... You may not say it now, yes. you may not say it now, but the, it's urgent as far as I'm concerned. Agree, Chair. Okay. So we will definitely ensure that we come back to you on that um, as soon as possible, um, so that we are able to give accurate dates and times. Honourable Minister, uh, Chairperson, hello. Yes, we can hear you, Honourable Minister. Oh, thank you very much, Chairperson. We've been having uh, on and off um, uh, problems here, but I think I'm online. Um, well, maybe let me start by thanking you, Chairperson, the honorable members of the Portfolio Committee for the continued um, support that we get. And uh, I want to confirm, as the DG is saying, ADG is saying, Chairperson, that um, we will continue to to work hard and thrive for uh, this cordial and robust engagement because it is extremely helpful. Um, not only is it helpful in terms of us responding to the needs of the people, but it is also helpful from a point of view of strengthening our institutions, both as SASA, as the DSD and the NDA as a portfolio. Because I am of the opinion, Chairperson, that the only way we can um, uh, uh, be seen to be uh, uh, strengthening our institutions will depend very much on what we see on the ground. And for so when some of the members indicate that it's one thing to see what's written on paper and another on, on the ground, I, I, I agree with that. And I, I do say that we'll continue to thrive towards making sure that what we're presenting here, when members are calling, for instance, um, Honorable van der Merve speaks about calling the, the hotline. I've done the same. And, and to some degree, um, I do agree that sometimes it's very frustrating um, when you call the call center and then you are kept waiting for a, a long time. And then you are also not giving the, the assuring. It's not about just being given information. It's about assuring information. It's about empowering information. It's about useful information that will make our, our beneficiaries actually have the confidence in what we are doing. So I'm thankful to the members for that. And I'm, 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 I, I am saying here again, myself and the DM takes really responsibility because even the reports that are coming here, we are not a post box, the DM and myself. We are people that have to go through the reports, make sure that they are a reflection but more than anything else, make sure that what is being said, even if it might not necessarily be fully implemented yet, it is something that we, we thrive to. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you, Chairperson, that um, we need to agree on the preferred state of affairs. We need to agree on the preferred state of support for our people. And I think everyone who's in the meeting today will take that um, away, away with us so that we begin to focus on what is actually the preferred state. And for me, a preferred state is not about us as an institution. It's about a preferred state where people can see the change that we're making in terms of the services that we have to give um, uh, to our people. 
I also have uh, indicated before, Chair, that where we have questions that have not been properly answered, mm -hmm. we promise and we, we must uh, make those available to the members through the portfolio committee uh, administration, those questions that uh, we think are strategic and are of high level that still need to be answered, they need to be, to be uh, answered. Um, when it comes to the issue of um, uh, the volunteers, Chairperson, in my thinking, and I know that we've had long discussions about this, and I, I think that I'm not looking at the volunteers only from a point of view of just this period of time when we are under uh, COVID-19 restrictions and all that. I'm looking at the cohort of volunteers who can be seen in the future to be working together with community workers, working together with um, uh, community policing forums, I'm not saying we're creating a parallel, but I'm saying if we have volunteers who we can have in the short and the long term, volunteers who can also graduate out of this being volunteers into something else. I've indicated both to the department and to um, NDA that we can't have a program of volunteers just for the sake of volunteers. In other countries, you'd find that the usage of volunteers is properly planned, properly managed, it's also empowering to the volunteers. So for now we've had this because of COVID-19, but I've, I've, I've requested the department and NDA to sit and, and, and look at this issue of volunteers um, much more carefully uh, from a point of view also empowering the volunteers so that they can go somewhere uh, uh, after this. But I leave it to them to, to come back later to give us that plan. Because, Chairperson, when we talk about community-based organizations and we talk about district development, one would like to see volunteers who take other issues, which are our social ills and the behavioral change that we need to do. I mean, Sasa would know that I was saying, I'm not happy with the communication because it's not having the impact that I would want it to have. And I was saying, imagine if the volunteers were to also be talking about some of these things besides just being seen to be managing queues and all that. So I let that go. And the third issue for me is with regard to communication. And for me, communication is beyond just, again, communicating to, it's about communicating and giving people in, information that will empower them in order for them to make decisions for themselves. We cannot communicate with information that goes above people's heads. And then we think, well, we've spent the money there. Then that's why, even the agency that we are talking about, I've said we must use agencies that will also be connected to the radio, local uh, community radio stations and all that. So I'm thinking the communication must also go beyond the issue of SASA. Right now we've got a, an issue of behavioral change, which is one of the biggest programs uh, in South Africa. You see um, the uh, honorable, I can't remember, who, the, the, the honorable who raised the issue about the doctors who um, are, are, are actually making money out of a, a difficult situation. Doctors who are making almost 13,000 rand per day. And um, it's Honorable Fandameve who raised the issue about Sasa not being a cash cow. All those things are also about how do we make sure that our own people look beyond just going to the doctor? It should be in their interest to say, I'm coming to this doctor here and this doctor is just making money out of me. How do I deal with that? How do I report that? Because we need to be able to, um, to assist each other. Uh, also with regard to uh, communication, I'm thinking that it's not just, it, it's also about the current situation we're finding ourselves in as far as COVID-19 is concerned. The behavioral change program and project that we have, we can be able to also use the volunteers working together with the NGOs. And right now we have the program with the faith-based organizations. We can also connect uh, our, our volunteers to be able to assist because communication, as I say, it must be for empowering people and helping them change their lives. With regard to the report um, uh, uh, from the police, I have not yet received a report because remember that I indicated in the last meeting that firstly, I was making it very clear that no order came from us or from myself or from Sasa or to, 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 uh, uh, for the police to spray water on anybody. And I did indicate that 
as far as our, I'm concerned and as far as the CEO and everyone is concerned, it's, as a, it's in our interest that people who come to our service points are taken good care of and they are, they are treated well. And therefore, I indicated even then that I am the one that requested that they shouldn't be doing uh, what they, they are doing. And I know that the um, human rights also has had a meeting with the Western Cape uh, 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 SAPS leg. And I know that SASA is also supposed to be meeting with the human rights also to deal with the issue. So let me promise to the meeting that once we have the report, we're gonna come back with it because I guess it is a report that needs to be taken uh, to the relevant uh, structures to deal with it so that such things do not happen uh, uh, again. It's not something that one can 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 just take it for granted that you know they were doing what they were doing. And any misunderstanding that might have been created, I really wish to further clarify that I I did not uh, send uh, the, I didn't ask the police um, uh, uh, to do that. And I think I've I've communicated adequately. Uh, Chairperson, I I think that. Um, what you said from the very beginning when you spoke about the fact that the inter, the, the, there must be demonstrable interventions, but we need to restructure and amend uh, 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 the, the, the plan. I think it's going to be a continuous uh, 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 presentation to the portfolio committee, but I personally believe certain things must come to an end. They mustn't be coming back and repeating themselves, especially because we are saying there are new ways of doing things. It is important for us to make the changes, but when all is said and done, you said it yourself, Chairperson, that it is about the service that we give to our, our, our people. It's about the customer care that we need to, to, to make sure that uh, people feel the comfort. And I hear members still saying they went to Belleville and they still didn't find the chairs. They still, uh, they still didn't see uh, the difference that we are talking about. I can assure you, I am also going back to Cape Town again. And my intention was to go back to those places, but also even go even outside of the Western Cape, whether I'm in the Western Cape or I'm in KZN or I'm in the Free State, what is important for me is to sometimes get out of the cities because the cities are the places where people are able to make reports and the media and others are, are closer. But when you go to far flung places, the situation is different. We commit to person uh, to do the best that we can at all times. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, Honorable Minister. Uh, thank you, Honorable Members, for the contribution. This is not an event. This is a process of improving conditions under which our people are being served, meaning South Africans. And I want to say, in the next meeting, when we meet with the department, a progress report on this matter with a restructured framework of reporting will be very useful. And uh, I hope Acting DG, in a week's time, we will know the date when the joint support and yourself plan on the general choose all over the country involving other grants, in particular the social grants. At that point, my gratitude to you, Minister, as always, for this cooperation. And I'm not joking when I'm saying the robust relationship with the department is very helpful in terms of the report one gets outside there. And the thing to me is that if you love anything, be honest with it. Because the only way to celebrate the success of that honesty is when the honest in, it, in, it, in reality has been executed. And I want to thank you, uh, Minister, Department, and I want to thank the members of the committee for the ever robustness. At that point in time, Lindy, we, am I not supposed to close the meeting? Yes, Chairperson, we don't have any other agenda item for discussion. Thank you Thank very you much. very much. <laughs> I love you all, South Africans. Meeting is adjourned. I like the loving as part, Chairperson. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And let me be a birthday again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. Meeting is adjourned.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm going to end the meeting for everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Mama. Bye, sweetie.